What's up everyone? Karu here from My Tennis HQ. Hope you guys are doing great. And in this video, I'm going to share with you a, a simple tip to help you increase the power of your ground strokes without sacrificing control in the process. Generating power from your ground strokes happens because of a lot of factors. There's racket head speed, there's loading your legs, turning your shoulders, uh, accelerating your hips, making clean contact with the ball. There's a lot of things that need to happen in order for you to hit solid, powerful ground strokes. But out of all those factors, the one that is usually overlooked by amateurs is the use of their legs and hips in order to hit better ground strokes. Now, most people know they have to bend their knees uh, in order to hit good ground strokes. And I'm sure if you have taken a tennis lesson, your coach probably said like, bend your knees, bend your knees. But what happens after you bend your knees? And what happens leading up to the bend of the knees? There's a, a sequence of events that I want to show you that you should be doing. And typically if you don't do uh, the banding the knees and pushing after that, uh, which I'll show you in a second, a sort of break that chain of events that will would make your ground stroke nice and smooth and obviously more powerful and controllable. So now I'm going to show you how to use your legs and hips a little bit more on your ground strokes with a simple technique that I often tell my players to, to do so, which I call it the sink and push. And before we start, if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe, it really helps us. Also give it a thumbs up, uh, helps us spread the word and make my tennis HQ uh, as big as possible. Also, if you're going to buy anything from Amazon, my and tennis warehouse, we got affiliate links below that helps us get a little bit of a commission, no cost to you. Plus we have merch. So we got that link down below our little store with some merch. It's really dope. Um, make sure you buy something, support the channel. Uh, we really appreciate it. Well, let's, let's learn how to hit better ground strokes. Okay, so once again, we're gonna use Marcos Giron to help you visualize what I'm trying to teach in this video. He has great ground strokes, just technically sound all the way around from his feet, footwork um, to his technique, his contact, his acceleration. So obviously it's someone that we can learn a lot from. So when we hit ground strokes, there's a chain of events that happens <clears throat> as, we're hitting, as we're hitting ground strokes. So, We'll, we'll, have, we'll make our split step and from here, you see that the unit turn starts, so upper body right here starts. That's the first thing. You gotta turn your shoulders, making sure you're gonna hit a backhand or a forehand. So that's the first thing that happens. After that, we're going to, as we're doing actually our unit turn, we're also gonna be moving our feet to create the right amount of space between us and the ball. Obviously here we're hitting down the middle so he didn't really have to move that much to create space, but spacing is very important so we can replicate our shot over and over, um, trying to have the same contact point over and over. From that point on, this is where I want you guys to focus on. As, as you create the right space and you're going to stop and load up your legs, typically the, the, the instruction is bend your knees, bend your knees, but what happens when we bend our knees? So let's watch here. So let's watch that chain of events. Split step, unit turn, then he creates the space and here he's loaded. So he's he completely loaded here and he's going to push the ground. Pay attention to his feet here. How he actually pushes the ground forward and a little bit upward so he doesn't want to jump too much but he's pushing the ground he's using the ground in his favor again let's watch unit turn he's creating the space with his feet look 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 now he's he has the space he already gauged where he wants to be and then here is where he's completely loaded and this is where this is the most important part this is what what i want you guys to focus you see that his hips they they're up here at first and as he gets to the ball and creates the right space, you see how they will sink a little bit. They sunk, look at that. So he's not just bending the knees, he's sinking the hips as well. He's completely locked and loaded here, almost like below the line of the ball with the hips. So completely loaded here with the legs. You see the legs, how they're 
they're bent and loaded and then from here he's going to pay attention I'm going to do this very slowly but pay attention that as he starts to his follow through that he's, he's not his follow through his forward swing you see that the hip actually starts going turning and you see how much he's pushing the ground watch what's happening with his feet here how much he's pushing the ground here and then look how how the hips are rotating even before the racket moves forward obviously you don't want to open up the hips too early but once once you do that in sync in sync or in sync everything is in sync it becomes so much easier to hit powerful and controllable ground strokes you see that obviously here he really went for it he jumped but man that was that is textbook this is where you guys need to learn is that movement that it's so important and keep paying attention here how his load pushes the ground bah. loads pushes the ground and it happens every single time so split step unit turn gets to the ball creates the space pushes obviously that was a very deep shot so he had to he couldn't push as hard but here let's watch the unit turn so quick here that was a great great example of a lower ball as well where he splits up unit turn and then he gets the the ball creates the space and then here you see like in the last second as he's about to bring that racket forward the hips sink a little bit as he bends his knees and then he's pushing look at that push forward with his feet boom push push forward so remember that sink and push sink and push it's so so important because the chain of events that we that happens when we hit ground strokes if you don't use your legs properly you kind of mess up what's actually happening in the upper body um, and then it becomes much easier to generate power I'm not saying you can generate power um, but you actually need to load a little bit more and push a little bit more with the legs. So remember to, if you have the spacing right, if you have everything right, um, good unit turn, make sure you're just, you're not just bending the knees, you're sinking, you're sinking your body and then you're pushing yourself upwards and forwards towards the ball. Uh, it's gonna help you just use all of your weight in order to create more power with your ground strokes and more control as well. Okay, so now I just wanna show you guys what I just explained during the Marcus's video during a point situation. Obviously, just hitting out the middle doesn't really do justice to that. So let's first watch the point and then I'll break it down. good point here by me I wish I was hitting forehands like that all the time but in any case so the I want you guys to pay attention to what I just said a chain of the of events that happens during the ground strokes so the point of this video again is not for you to just hit super hard ground strokes it's for you to just increase the speed of your ground stroke by using your legs so if you watch this uh, back let's push the surf here well, and then from here, I want to slow it down. So let's slow it down a little bit. You see that I will, I have to move to the ball first as my unit turn happens. So I'm moving, I'm creating the right distance, like I said before. Then the moment I feel like I'm in the right distance, you see my feet will stop, my hips will sink, I will be bent, and I'm able to push better on that upward trajectory so boom and then I'm able to really hit the ball well with good pace to the other side now admittedly once we move to the forehand here I don't really do as good of a job on my forehand have never done that good of a job as good of a job on my forehand as I do on my backhand but you see that the same chain chain of events happens I see that that ball is coming to my forehand after the split step, so the unit turn starts as I'm moving to the ball. I create the distance, and then here I'm going to stop and really try to push the ground. You see how much I'm trying to push the ground here. Pushing, pushing, pushing. 
didn't get the right distance there. It wasn't the best, but um, still was able to hit a decent ball. And then here, actually, his ball didn't hurt me too much and didn't make me move too much. So you see that in the second ball here, I'm able to actually just in a couple of steps be in the right position with the unit turn. And then you see that I will load. Look at that load right there. So load here, my hips are sinking. And then as I move forward, you see how the hips will be rotating. I'm gonna be pushing the ground. You see that push right there. That's gonna bring my racket around faster. And then I'm able to hit a better ball, even got off the ground there because I actually had so much time to load and push that I got off the ground. But remember, if you're jumping, you still wanna be jumping forward, not just too vertically. And then I hit a ball to open the court. And then there, again, he hits a ball that moves me a little bit, but I, I notice that he's going to land short. So I try to take the ball early, which I do, I get closer to the baseline, but you see as I gauge the distance here, I'm going to step. I obviously don't load as much on this one because it's a little bit higher ball, but you see how I'm still gonna push the ground. I might not bend as much, but I'm going to be pushing the ground. You see that push, I even got off the, get off the ground again, and then I take the ball early and end up finishing with the winner. So obviously things happen much faster at my level than at the amateur level, but the better you, you get at doing this as you hit the ball and you move to the ball and then you try to stop, plant your feet, create this load here, and then you can use your the hip rotation to push off the ground to hit better ground strokes, deeper ground strokes, and more stable, more controllable ground strokes that don't rely solely on your arms and hands. Well, the main takeaway from this video, and like I said before, there's a sequence of events that should be happening. There's a chain of events when we hit our, our ground stroke, starting with our unit turn and creating distance, then loading and pushing with the legs as we're bringing the racket forward. And from experience, what, I've, what I see most amateurs, where I see most amateurs messing up is with their lower body and that breaks that chain of events right because the lower body actually happens early in this chain of events and if you mess that up you typically you will mess you know what's happening up uh, with the technique up up here and this is something I've, i see a lot with with players that they often have good technique with the upper body but they don't use their legs enough they don't they're not loading enough or bending enough depending on the height of the ball um, and they mess up their shot and they think it's their swing, where it's not. It's like if, if you don't, let's say on a, on a low ball, don't bend enough, um, you're not going to be able to get under the ball. If you hit into the net, it's not because your swing was bad, it's because you weren't able to get under the ball. There's only so much your racket can go down just with your arms. Your body needs to actually sink down uh, for certain balls. So uh, typically um, the problems are uh, with the lower body. Uh, as you advance your tennis game. Once you kind of figure out your swing, uh, it's the footwork and the pushing and loading. That's where things get messed up. So don't let that be you. Don't let that happen to you. Um, next time you're on the court, try to use this little technique, this sink and push, making sure your hips are getting, you know, at the line of the ball, below the line of the ball as much as you can so you can actually push them up and forward all the time towards the ball, using your body uh, to create momentum to the ball and not just kind of falling back or not even using your legs. I think that's going to help a lot with your ground strokes. It's gonna add some power, it's gonna be more controllable. You're gonna have like more flow to it and the entire body is actually going into the shot and not just um, your hands or your wrist snap and things like that. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoy it. This is a pretty simple way to improve your tennis game. Um, obviously it will take time, but the more you focus on that and the more it becomes subconscious, the easier uh, tennis becomes. Obviously, if you don't even know how to hit the ball yet and how to do a proper swing uh, up at the top with, the, with your upper body, um, this isn't necessarily the video for you. But if you're already competing and you're trying to level up, I think this is an easy way to, to improve, your, improve your game um, with just a few steps. Um, again, the sink and push. Try to put that in your head next time you're playing. 
try to time that right, sink, push, sink, push, and I think you're going to uh, do a much better uh, job on the core. Uh, again, if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. Really appreciate it. Uh, give it a thumbs up as well. Visit MyTennisHQ.com. We've got a lot, a lot of cool stuff coming up. We also have a Patreon launching. I'm just going to throw that out there. I'm going to talk about it more um, in a little bit, but make sure you're subscribed uh, so you don't miss that. Uh, it's going to be a really fun project that we're going to do through Patreon, so make sure uh, you don't miss, miss out when I talk about that. And I'll see you guys on the next one.